Picture your 70 year old self springing up the stairs, brain firing like a new laptop. Quick question, what if a teaspoon sized molecule could help you do this? Would you take it? And I'm not talking about some super expensive neurotropic drug, but creatine, one of the best studied nutrients out there. And it's not just for bodybuilders. Creatine is produced in your kidneys and liver from the amino acids arginine and glycine. And inside every cell, it loads up with phosphate to become phosphocreatine which is basically nature's portable battery pack. And this helps produce ATP or energy whenever you need it fast. So that includes muscles for sure, but also heart, bone, immune function, and critically your brain. So let's look at what creatine does and a surprising gene hack hidden inside creatine that helps the methylation cycle. And at the end, we'll discuss the best type of creatine to take. So when should you start taking creatine? The best time is now. During early adulthood, or if you're plant-based or under a heavy cognitive load or training hard, it's a great time to start it. If you're in midlife in your 40s, you can take it to slow down muscle and bone loss before frailty starts. And even after 60 years of age, studies show that daily creatine use with light resistance training can help to reverse sarcopenia or muscle loss, improve bone density, and strength by 8%. So the bottom line is that it's never too late to start taking creatine. There's a saying, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, so you can enjoy it now. But the second best time to plant a tree is today. So now is as good a time as any to start taking creatine if you haven't already. I used to take creatine years ago when I was a wannabe bodybuilder, but now I've started taking it again, mainly for the brain benefits, which we'll discuss later. So creatine can benefit longevity and healthy aging. A meta-analysis of adults over 60 showed that just three to five grams of creatine a day combined with two to three resistance exercise sessions added about a kilogram of lean muscle mass. This helped to boost leg strength and reduce the risk of falls. Bone studies in postmenopausal women showed that one to 2% gains in femoral neck density after just 12 weeks of creatine. This is a small study, but if you keep taking it over many years, this can help to reverse the natural decline of bone and muscle. And on the metabolic front, creatine helps the GLUT4 transporters. This is improves fasting glucose levels and can help to lower your A1C and prevent diabetes. As I said, the main reason I take creatine now is for the brain power and preventing cognitive decline, especially with uh, your genetics like MTHFR and APOE4. And a lot of sporting teams have added creatine to their player supplement list, not just for better muscle strength, but also to prevent brain injuries and concussions. Your brain roughly holds the same creatine concentration as your quadriceps, but only if it's topped up and you need to supplement or eat enough protein to help have this happen. And if you get a concussion or a brain injury, your demand for creatine goes up, which is why these teams supplement. A 2024 metal analysis of 13 randomized trials found that small to moderate improvements in memory and processing speed, even when participants were sleep deprived, stressed. So creatine can help brain function more efficiently. Creatine can help with neuroprotection. So this can help with things like Parkinson's disease and as I mentioned before, concussion. So creatine is safeguarding dopamine neurons and cutting neuron injury markers. Traumatic brain injury can improve faster and quicker with creatine supplementation. You can do that afterwards, but it's even shown to be better if you've been taking it before. So MMA fighters were at constant risk of head injuries and concussions taking these types of supplements, but anyone can do it. You can never predict when you're gonna have a fall or an accident. Creatine can help boost your mood. Several studies report depressive symptoms, and especially in women on low creatine diets, which is a low protein diet, can improve their mood by supplementing with three to five grams of creatine. Creatine can help with methylation and homocysteine, and if you've got a mutation in the MTHFR gene, which 40% of the population do, including me, and making just one gram of creatine burns up half of your daily S adenosyl methionine. And this is the universal methyl donor. So this helps to increase homocysteine in your bloodstream. And if you are a carrier of the MTHFR gene, you have trouble recycling homocysteine back into methionine. So supplementing with just three to five grams of creatine a day can help to improve your methylation. And this is important for everyone, but especially if you have the MTHFR gene. 
Clinical trials show that creatine can lower homocysteine levels by 5 to 9%, and that's comparable to just taking folate. So by having creatine, you may not need as much B vitamins. Your methylation cycle helps with things like DNA repair, neurotransmitter balance, detoxification, and a lot more. So it's important to look after methylation. And if you want to find out the best test to check your DNA, including MTHFR, APOE, and thousands of other genes, Check out the description below for the test that I use with clients. Many men have been taking creatine for years to build muscle, and women often haven't been taking it traditionally. Women typically store 20 to 30% less intramuscular creatine than men. That's because estrogen blunts creatine kinase. So in premenopausal women, just having three to five grams of creatine today a day can help to boost your memory and mood. And in postmenopausal women, you often only need that three to five grams to help improve your muscle, bone density, and once again, also mood. So for women interested in creatine, watch this video that I made about creatine specifically for women. So how do you take creatine? So you only need three to five grams a day, and you don't need that old school loading dose of 20 to 25 grams a day for five days. That can lead to GI upsets, and research shows that the loading phase for most people is not necessary, especially if you're taking it for the brain and other health benefits. When to take it? Well, any time of the day, really. There may be a slight benefit taking it before or after exercise, but the most important thing is that you take it. Some people are concerned about creatine and kidney function, and they often mistake creatinine on their blood test, which is a kidney marker, for creatine. But studies show that you can take creatine even if you have a low GFR of around 45. Creatine won't cause kidney problems. Other concerns are things like water retention, but that's just intramuscular water, and it's just helping with your muscles look better. Creatine won't lead to weight gain necessarily. And what's the best type of creatine to take? The most researched one is micronized creatine monohydrate. This is the best research. You don't need any fancy new formulas or this is the most advanced formula out there. And just take three to five grams for 12 weeks and track your workouts, how you feel. Uh, you could always check homocysteine and then homocysteine in the 12 weeks and see what the difference is. And if you notice your homocysteine dropping, leave a comment in the comments below, be interested to hear. Of course, you can take it for longer than 12 weeks. It's something you can take as part of your supplement stack forever.